I'm here with Simon Stevens, who is the president of United Health Groups uh, Global Health. United is, of course, the nation's largest health insurance company, and um, there's a lot of innovation going on in healthcare and health insurance. Um, but one thing is for sure that employers and, and our federal government are either unwilling or unable to pay more uh, for health care, a lot of belt tightening going on. And you're out there with a new report talking about, a, which would some would see a radical transformation of moving away from fee-for-service medicine where physicians do their work, hospitals do their work, and then they get a bill for it. Could tell us a little bit about um, what United is and, and the in, and industry is talk, that are talking about doing differently and how you can, we can save hundreds of billions of dollars. There's a national consensus developed that it's time to move away from paying for the components of care and instead paying for quality and for um, outcomes of care. The question though is how do you move from here to there? So within that consensus there's still a lot of discussion about what are the practical steps it will take to get more value from the 2.8 trillion dollars that America is spending on healthcare this year. And the pressure is on because the government estimates that that 2.8 trillion will rise to 4.8 trillion uh, by the end of the decade. And so the question is, how can changing the information and the incentives that are available to doctors and hospitals and us as consumers, how can that bring about this uh, improvement that everybody wants to see? And so uh, tell me a little bit about that. How, how would that work? When you're talking about moving away from fee-for-service, what are we moving toward? Yeah, we're talking about a three-part strategy. First, we need to have more transparency. Everybody who works inside healthcare knows that there's a lot of variation in quality and cost of care, but patients don't necessarily either know that or have the tools to make smart choices when they could do so. Mm -hmm. So we've just seen a new national survey of American doctors that we've published in which 59% of US physicians say that there are meaningful differences in the quality of care being provided by doctors in their local area. 59% uh, doctors themselves say mm -hmm. there are these big quality differences. Mm -hmm. But if you ask the public, do you think there are? Only 44% of people uh, believe that to be the case. So that 15 percentage point difference, if you like, between what doctors know and what their patients see Who are paying is for the it. transparency gap. Right. And it's that transparency gap that is the first thing that we've got to tackle by getting a lot more uh, open with the data so that uh, health professionals themselves can see how they're doing and can use it to help improve and so that uh, patients can make good choices about how they themselves get treated. Can you give us a, sort of a real life example of how that would work? I mean, it, are we talking about um, where you know I would there's a certain procedure and I would actually get information that says you know what Dr. X is better at this and he's also less expensive is, is that how it would work or could, give me a little information so United Healthcare has now profiled just under 250,000 physicians across the country in uh, 21 medical specialties and those range from primary care cardiology orthopedics what we've then done is looked at the uh, performance of those 250,000 doctors against the national quality standards that the medical specialty societies themselves have set and other evidence-based guidelines. And then uh, in addition to comparing the quality against the standards that the medical profession itself has said makes sense, looked at the differences in cost of providing care within a given town or city or um, rural area. And what we find is that across the country there is a 14% difference in the cost of care for high quality uh, doctors uh, versus others. And in some specialties like cardiology, uh, that might be 18%, in orthopedic surgery, 21%. So the first kind of practical thing is to make that information available to patients at the time they are making choices about their health care. And we do that through uh, a whole range of uh, support, including obviously having that information available um, on websites and uh, support from nurse coaches and others. And that's still, even though it's, that's gone on in other industries for years, that's still a new phenomenon. So I'm a patient, yeah. I go on a website and I actually can actually compare 
um, my physician to another physician? And that's usually, is there usually like a star rating system or yeah. how, how does that work? There is, so we, we, the approach we take is to have, uh, first of all, uh, assessments for quality, so a star uh, for meeting quality benchmarks, and then only those physicians who meet the quality benchmarks are assessed on the efficiency. So we're, we're making sure that it's all high quality uh, providers uh, who then uh, are also assessed for the uh, cost of care. Because I think one of the things that uh, consumers are feeling is under a lot of pressure around rising healthcare costs. And so increasingly they're wanting to know how they can make choices that will uh, make a difference to the uh, total cost of care that they are uh, increasingly on the receiving end of. And are these physicians, if you've profiled 250,000 physicians, are these uh, physicians that just work with United Healthcare? Do they work with other insurance companies? And also, um, do the physicians know and participate in these ratings and yes, profiles? Yes, sure. So the um, criteria have been agreed with the uh, medical uh, specialty societies uh, where uh, appropriate, endorsed by the National Quality Forum. And so we are wanting to work as collaboratively as possible with doctors because uh, there are kind of two main reasons for doing this. One is to enable patients to make choices, but the other is because physicians themselves want to know how they are doing. And a lot of the data isn't available in their own uh, practice system. So this is also a collaborative effort uh, to try and help improve care, uh, not just to enable people to make uh, good choices. And you also said you had other parts of your strategy. <coughs> Would you l l elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah. So point number one is transparency. Uh, point number two is uh, sharing data and changing the way in which uh, doctors and hospitals are paid so that they are supported in providing care in a way that uh, makes sense for patients. What do I mean by that? I mean that at the moment, for example, most primary care doctors are only paid when a patient goes to visit the office, mm -hmm. whereas actually it might make more sense to uh, pay uh, to help keep patients healthy, and that's what this idea of primary care medical homes is all about. Mm -hmm. So we've been at United Healthcare testing that model with a number of primary care uh, practices, and the early results are quite promising, uh, showing a two to one uh, return on investment, and also enabling primary care to uh, do more of the things that primary care uh, ought to be doing in terms of care coordination. Mm -hmm. in, in the third aspect? So the third aspect, alongside transparency and alongside uh, support for uh, doctors and hospitals themselves, is empowering consumers and making sure that uh, they are able to uh, choose and make uh, good uh, decisions about the care they need. And if I just give you an example of mm -hmm. that, for about 20 years now, in fact, uh, we've been working with centers of excellence, some of the best hospitals in the country, for really serious conditions like um, organ transplantation or uh, complex cancers or uh, neonatal or congenital. Uh, and by centers of conditions. excellence, you mean, of course, like, you know, might be an MD, MD Anderson in yeah. cancer or a Cleveland so we, Clinic So we parts. work with them, take the data, identify what are the survival rates, what are the uh, clinical uh, quality measures that suggest that these are indeed the nation's finest uh, centers, and then share that data uh, with patients and help patients uh, make uh, good choices. And what we find, for example, with organ transplantation is that this can lead to a five percentage point improvement in survival rates and a 49% reduction in the cost of care. So actually doing better is costing less because we're, there are we're fewer complications, fewer redos, fewer avoidable emissions and so on. And whereas decades ago people <coughs> would have said it's too expensive to get an organ transplant, right. now it's sort of the inverse, it's flipped. Yeah, I think what we find is that um, it's not just about uh, trying to uh, minimize the cost of individual components of care, it's looking at the overall pathway that you're going to take as a patient uh, from the start of your interaction with the healthcare system right through to not just the hospital admission, but then when you're back home and being looked after. Mm -hmm. And when you make uh, that kind of assessment, uh, often you find that um, providers uh, that may be doing one piece of it uh, are needing support to be able to put the whole package together and that's part of what we try to do so that the patient experience is, is uh, as best as it can be. And so do you think that there will be a time where 
um, people will go, this seems to be moving rapidly, that there will be a time where people will be able to go and, and get match the pricing with the quality? Are we going to get to that, do you think? I think that's critical because I think simply making judgments on price. So is next to the star would be price. And so yeah, and so exactly. So United Healthcare is doing that with its healthcare cost estimator in um, the vast majority of the uh, country now. So that I, as a uh, United Healthcare uh, consumer uh, member, can go online and can look at exactly that information and can get a good understanding of what my out-of-pocket costs will be if I get my MRI here rather than there rather than somewhere else and understand how the MRI is linked to the uh, orthopedic outpatient consultation and my subsequent knee replacement so that I can look at the total package of care because it's not just individual components, it's the pathway of care that's very important. And when do you think that all this will be together? I mean, is it going on right now? And is it online? United Healthcare is doing it right now. Um, a survey done recently asked how many people across the US are using these kind of tools to look at the uh, price of uh, alternative uh, care providers before they go in for treatment. Uh, two years ago, 11% of people said they looked at pricing information before they were treated. Uh, this year, that's gone up to 16%, and I think most people expect that that number will carry on rising. So I think we're kind of on the verge of an important uh, change in the way in which people uh, interact with the healthcare system, recognizing that this is not a silver bullet. There's lots of other things got to change as well, but under almost any scenario, these three things that I talked about, transparency, change incentives to support doctors and hospitals, uh, improve quality, and incentives uh, and support for us as consumers, those three things have got to be part of the solution regardless. Well, with that, I'd like to thank Simon Stevens from United Health Group, who's been our guest in the Forbes Healthcare Summit. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you, Bruce. Pleasure.